everyone how you doing today i'm back with another video and in today's video we have an hp elite book folio 9480m model here and in this video i'm gonna go over how you can open it up and how you can repaste and clean up the fan system and the heat the sink and even the thermal paste if yours is running really hot and after a few minutes it just keeps shutting down the cpu for the intel cpu they tend to do this one once they go over temperature they will just shut down for a protection but you should be doing your own repaste and cleaning every few years every year and a half depending on the usage that you want to give by doing this you're not going to avoid any warranty or anything like that so this client brought it in and it's kind of not dirty just peeling off the it's kind of stickiness so i'm going to go over the tools that i'm going to be using to do this service First thing first is an alcohol isopropolic or isopropolic 95% plus alcohol. You will need a workshop towel, one sheet of the workshop towel. These are really great to do the servicing. You will need a screwdriver set. I recommend everybody to get the or anybody that does servicing or if you want to have some screwdriver at home, get the iFixit screwdriver set. These are one of the best screwdriver set out there. These are made out of S2 classic steel bed. They will last you many years. If you get the Pro set, this is the basic set, just a screwdriver. If you get the Pro set, they will include tweezers, opening tools, and a few other stuff. In this case, I have only the, the basic set for the opening tool. I'm going to be using a guitar pick. A metallic guitar pick are really suitable to opening cases and covers. You only need a Thermal paste, your favorite thermal paste. I'll be using an Arctic uh, MX4. These are really good. You can go over the, over the board and get the thermal grizzly cryonaut. I'll leave those links in my video description in case you want. Also, you need a curved or straight tweezers. I'm gonna use a curved one, pointy curved for this video. And with all this on hand, we're gonna get it started and we're gonna work on this one. You need a toothbrush, old or new toothbrush. All right. First thing first, you want to power off the laptop. Once you power off the laptop, you want to flip it upside down. In here, we first you want to remove the battery by removing this trigger all the way to the this side. I mean, the other way. Move the trigger towards the left side and slide the battery towards yourself a little bit until you see this gap. And then simply you want to lift it up from front side upward. So there's your battery put that to one side next we need to remove the left side cover for the service for the hard drive and the ram by removing i mean losing up this screw and this one when i say lose up because they have a c-lock and let a spring to them so the screw will come out but not entirely will not come out so all you need to do is just do a few rotate and you're gonna see it just comes up leave it like that same thing for this side make sure it comes up now you want to slide this cover towards the left side about half a centimeter or maybe four millimeters and then you want to lift up this side you can take it outside and clean it up because it is really dirty now in here we have the hard drive and everything else we're not going to touch anything in here we need to remove the service cover on the top this is really easy by removing the screws in here again these screws have a seed lock so you can't pull them up entirely just loose them up a screw in here this one right here you're not going to touch that one and we're going to remove this one and we're going to remove this one over here once we remove those ones we're just going to lift it up oh i forgot one the last one in here once we remove all this now we're going to lift it up bring it towards the back and there's your bottom cover all dirty and the dust mesh has some kind of weird paste stuff in it so you want to clean up all those Take a, even you can wash this one up and let it dry if you want. All right, and down here you can see the whole thing heat sink and the fan is really clogged up. It's really dusty and the air circulation on this one is horrible right now. So imagine how the inside there. But for this design, we can't just remove the heat sink because we need to remove this plate. If they had put this plate under the heat sink, it would be great. But just because of this tiny place right now, we need to remove the whole chassis on the bottom. And uh, we need to do a little bit of work here. So first thing first, we're going to remove the hard drive by removing four screws that touches the caddy. The caddy is the bracket that holds the hard drive in place. So go ahead and 
loosen up these screws. You got again the Phillips screws. The screws on this side, it does come out. Okay, now we're gonna lift it up. This one is kind of stuck in here. There has a little adhesive in this corner, so bring it up. Now you can detach it from the corner right here. Just this is an adapter. I'm gonna leave it in there so the adapter just goes down. So put the hard drive to one side. We're not gonna detach the BIOS battery, we're gonna leave it the way it is. We're just gonna detach it from the case. Has a little adhesive on the back and attach it on the board if you want to, like that. So now we're gonna remove the antenna cables from here from the out of the way. So remove this antenna antennas. You're gonna unplug them from here, just pull them upwards and untangle them from here. Just make sure it goes untangled all the way through the back. These antenna cables are kind of broken in here. So I have no idea who opened it before, maybe. So you're gonna remove them. Uh, they have a little sleeve on them to protect them, but the sleeve is upward. But this one they don't, don't matter. The one that matters are this one for the Wi-Fi. So we have untangled this one. Now next we're gonna switch to a torque screw here. I believe these are torque number six, or maybe it's higher. It's a higher torque. So let me find my torques right here. So we're gonna be using a torque number eight, I believe. Yes. So grab a torque number eight, and we're gonna remove these screws that touches the metal bracket right in here. Go ahead and remove all of them from one corner. We start going around around. These are M2 times 5, and the ones in under the battery, these are M2 times 3, so keep them in different piles so you don't mismatch them. Also, if you guys like my videos and you want to support the channel, you can do that by clicking that like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It will be a great, tremendous support for me to make more videos, take requests, answer your questions in the comment area. Pretty much remove every torque screw that you see on the bottom casing, the one in the corners, everywhere. At the back right there. You don't want to miss any hidden ones, one right there by the Wi-Fi cable. Alright, double check, make sure you haven't missed any torque screw, there's one right in the corner right here. Don't forget this one. Alright, I think I believe I have removed all the torque screws. I don't know if I missed any. Now you're gonna switch to a Phillips screw. And we're gonna screw this one right here, this one right there, and the one right here. So go ahead and remove these ones. I mean, just loose them up. Those are for the keyboard screws. Well, right, once you loosen up those ones, now we're gonna detach the bottom cover from here. To do this, we're just going to grab the opening tool and we're going to stick it between the bottom cover and the chassis. And we're just going to pull it up gently, try from one side, from both sides. I missed a screw right in the middle, I told you guys. There's always, you don't want to force it because there's always a chance that you miss a screw somewhere. So bring it up. And there's one more flip screw. Phillips right in here. You want to loosen up this one too. And then bring it up and that's it. Make sure your cables run through here. And there we have the bottom chassis, the bracket. Now we have full access to the motherboard here. So first thing first, we're going to remove the cable for the fan right here. You're going to pull it backward, wiggle it around and pull it back. And once you get it loose, you just want to wiggle it around while you're pulling it back. That's why I don't like pulling on the cables. I hold it from the side of the jack. I just keep wiggling it until it comes out. Now we're going to remove four screws on the bracket for the heatsink. 
you're gonna lift it up and you can continue if you want, or just remove the screw for the fan here and bring it up and you can see it's already clogged up with a uh, lots of dust and the rest of the dust is in there so that's why you need to clean up your fan system once in a while at least once in a year it's very very important so what we're gonna do here right now before we take it outside and clean it with a toothbrush and uh, compressed air i recommend you guys to use a compressed air in here don't use any canned air or anything like that they throw humidity and that's really bad for electronics even the market as a for electronics but do not use that use a dry air compressor and that's what you need to I'll put the link for a good compressors and powerful one and very small ones and that you can use so we're gonna grab a sheet of the workshop towel and we're gonna soak it in the alcohol like nicely make sure it's nicely soaked and we're gonna wipe over the CPU and remove the excess of the thermal paste if you have a little thermal paste in, around here just lift it up the thermal paste is not conductive so don't worry so make sure and use the dry part to shine that crystal dye same thing in here clean up the heat sink block now that we clean up all this I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to use a toothbrush to clean the fans and clean up the heat sink nicely. Just clean it up with a toothbrush. Take your time and blow some dry air and keep cleaning it up. And I'll be back right after. Now, all right, now that we cleaned up the fan nice and clean with a toothbrush and a compressed air, clean up the uh, heat sink nicely from inside out, everywhere. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a dry part and we're gonna make sure rub once or twice at about the die, at about the on top of the die. So so what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab the dry part and we're gonna on top of the crystal die just rub it, make sure it's nice and shiny, there's no fingerprints or anything, even the heat sink. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab the thermal paste, we're gonna put one drop on the first die like that and a tiny line on a secondary die just like that and once you have the thermal paste applied now what we're gonna do we're gonna bring this heat sink i like to bend the legs a little bit backward so i get an extra tension to the cpu so for the better heat transfer just a little bit make sure you pull them evenly back so what we're gonna do right now, put the fan in place. First put the fan right there. You don't need to screw it down, just make sure it's loosely right there and bring the heat sink. Align it on top, bring it down. You wanna hold it, there's a one, two, three, four numbers. Follow the numbers or just cross screw them. Doesn't matter, you can do four, three, two, one. As long as you cross screw them, you're fine. So we're gonna cross screw these ones. And we're gonna screw down the fan. There we go. And first, don't forget, always put the fan cable, connect the fan cable, otherwise you have to reopen the whole thing. Just slide it right in the connector, right there. And the next thing is to grab the bottom case. Make sure the Wi-Fi cables, everything goes through this hole. All right, and now you want to set it down straight on top and pretty much we are almost there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten up the screws that already have the Phillips on hand. So the keyboard screws, make sure you tighten up those. There we have it. Now we're going to work on a, we're going to work on the short screws, short torque screws. The one under the battery. So put the ones, the short ones, because there are a few of them, and then the long ones are easy. So I'm going to start under the battery, pretty much. And the rest is our long screw. So I'm just going to go run all around and put the rest of the torque screws all over the place, wherever I see a screw hole. And you don't need to put it there, wherever there's a label for the screw. So there's a number M2. 
Do not put this because this the one from the bottom casing goes here. Now that we put all the screws, now I'm gonna run the cable for the Wi-Fi. Make sure you just squeeze them right through the gap. All right, now we're gonna connect the Wi-Fi cables. Just put them over straight on top and just squeeze it down and make a tiny, tiny click. That's what you wanna hear. You can leave this one here or put a little gaffer's tape right on top. All right, once we have that one in there, we're going to grab the hard drive. We're going to bring it down evenly and put it, the connector right through there. Uh, set it down and tighten up the screws for this one. These are a Phillips screw. The screws on this side should not come out, but the C-lock on them, they're really bad. So in yours might not come out entirely so you just have to lose them up but yeah keep that in mind all right so once we have this one done if you have to clean up the bottom cover grab it set it down on the back side it's like a folding a book put sit down the hinges in here there's a broken hinge in this one you might have one or two broken hinge that's over time they just break bring it down close the lid straight down and then you want to tighten up these screws right in here. All right, once you have the screw tightened up, now you want to put this side down it's in an offset position and then slide it in. You don't want to put it straight on, you want to slide it in. And then you want to tighten it up. With the clips in here that I slide under the locks. Um, with that, the last thing would be to just grab the battery, put it in offset position, and then push it towards the top side and lock it down. And this is how you service your HP EliteBook Folio 9480M laptop. If you guys have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, don't forget to click the like and support the channel by subscribing. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching.